Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I hate to um, just repeat what's been said uh, so far, but uh, I think that the advent of uh, SGLT2 inhibitor uh, therapies is quite um, groundbreaking, right? Uh, you know, again, just to highlight medications that are developed primarily to treat diabetes are uh, really found to have significant benefit for heart disease and also kidney disease, right? Patients um, in, in, with one drug um, having diabetes had much less um, protein in the urine, much slower progression of their kidney disease, uh, required uh, less dialysis. So that was groundbreaking. And, and more recently, uh, another drug in the same class um, showed benefit uh, in patients who are also not diabetic. Um, so these are um, certainly agents that we're going to be utilizing more frequently for patients with chronic kidney disease, whether or not they have diabetes. And um, as we can appreciate, there's certainly a lot of overlap uh, with heart disease and kidney disease risk uh, and, and progression. So, so that's really one major advance in the last few years, which is quite welcome in a space where we're not, we've not had uh, a lot of uh, success, as Dr. Adimulam said. Uh, the other area that's gotten a lot of attention in the kidney space uh, is the more widespread use of genetic testing. Um, you know, we, th there was a, a pretty uh, eye-opening New England Journal uh, study from last year showing that about 10% of patients with chronic kidney disease actually have a genetic cause for their disease. So this is like straightforward gene mutations causing uh, the kidney disease, not just you know something that increases the risk in theory or requiring a second hit. Those are even more prevalent, but really actionable disease causing mutations. And as a result uh, of that influential uh, manuscript, uh, several companies now have been offering more genetic testing often with no charge uh, to, to patients with kidney disease. And uh, you know, in our practice, we've been incorporating more genetic testing uh, than we ever have. And this is sort of the way of the future. And um, this, this will have a lot of implications if rightly um, and correctly utilized uh, to not just you know, tell people what their risk for disease is and progression, but really potentially opening the door for precision therapy or, or, or gene therapy, you know, targeted treatment options, uh, rather than looking at uh, chronic kidney disease as sort of like you know, one uh, bucket, right, where all patients have the same risk and outcome. So these are some exciting developments that we think will, will advance here.